All right, all right. Let's get started on our next talk. Uh, you can kind of grab your seats, or if you uh, have a conversation, you can take it out uh, in the, uh, not onto the field, but out overlooking the field over there, or uh, kind of head over to the different uh, hallway tracks here. All right, uh, our next speaker is Alex Asuche, and we're really excited to have him here, so uh, I'll turn it over to you, Alex. Oh, wow. All right, guys. Thank you. All right, so uh, thank you for coming to this talk. This is uh, on adapting Agile for small SOC teams, uh, security operations centers, or uh, this talk will apply for uh, general security operations. Uh, typically for small teams, uh, with, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, we can use Azure DevOps, uh, which used to be called uh, VSCS, Visual, uh, Visual Studio Team Services. Uh, a lot of people refer to it as TFS as well. Uh, nowadays it's just called Azure DevOps because that's a cooler name. So um, I, uh, I am a father and husband, application security consultant at a company called Invisium. I basically hack applications, review code, issue recommendations. It's an awesome job, I love security. I wanted to work in security since uh, I was in eighth grade. I worked as a security engineer, um, software developer for a small IT team as well. Uh, I have had the opportunity to modernize a small um, dev and security teams, both as a consultant and being part of the uh, team itself. Uh, previously, I was a software developer, uh, mainly as a consultant, um, did tech support as well. That was not fun. Um, also do bug bounties on the side. Uh, and this is the first time ever that I set foot in a uh, school stadium, so that's cool. Uh, so let's see, this, uh, this is how the story goes. So once upon a time, there's a company growing. Clients are requiring security certifications, uh, things like I, uh, ISO 27001, uh, or other security certifications that basically tell the clients or the company that's working uh, with the company in question that, hey, uh, you are secure, uh, you have these security certifications, we trust you, We're gonna, we wanna do business with you. The company says security, Pfft, we're secure. Uh, company may also say, mm, we don't need more security, who's going to attack us anyways, uh, we're pretty small. Uh, company may also say, we're secure, only the internal network might have some vulnerabilities, but who's gonna do anything? We trust our employees, they're good guys. Uh, then they read the requirements for the certification, run scans, perhaps using free trials for software like, uh, I don't know, Rabbit7, uh, Inside VM, uh, Nessus, et cetera. Um, I'll just show them vulnerabilities that I have found while I um, was bored. Uh, and they also say, we need to modernize stuff. So, <laughs> uh, and this might involve both, you know, in terms of security, IT, uh, and also the way in which the internal teams uh, work and do um, organize their work. Uh, so then they are like, I know this guy who won't shut up to, uh, about security, let's have him help us. And I'm like, yes. So uh, basically that's what we're gonna talk about. Uh, we're gonna talk about how uh, basically I helped and how you can also uh, apply agile concepts uh, and DevOps technologies to uh, security operations. Uh, and then we'll go a little bit later into why. Uh, so teams usually, uh, in, in this case, this particular situation, the team was using Waterfall for everything. It's just an internal team. Uh, consultants were just using all kinds of uh, fancy agile methodologies. Uh, this is based on a true story, but any resemblance to real persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. So, um, the company goes, we need a, a, a SecOps program uh, and an SOC, a security operations center. What do they do? They do security monitoring, incident response. Uh, they do vulnerability management, uh, typically for the internal infrastructure of the company. Uh, obviously then, based on that, they do remediations uh, and other security related tasks which can fall on their everyday IT uh, stuff. So just uh, patching, asset management and discovery, uh, configuring uh, security appliances uh, like firewalls, uh, things like that, et cetera. Uh, so I had the goals to modernize the dev team. Uh, that's a little bit uh, of a side thing, but I uh, had to use uh, DevOps tools uh, for CI CD pipelines uh, and incorporating Agile. Um, because as I mentioned, the team was working, most teams were working in a wonderful manner. Uh, had to help build a small SOC team. 
uh, familiarize IT with uh, vulnerability management and incident response. Uh, people were not familiar with a lot of things uh, in regards to security, so there was a lot to learn. Um, so once I am tasked to do this, then I'm asking myself, so we are modernizing the internal developer development team, uh, but we have to do security in a waterfall way. Um, so, you know, Excel sheets, Gantt charts, and obstacle courses that must be completed before anything gets done. So, uh, no, let's just see how we can do security uh, in an agile way. Um, a lot of people that I've talked uh, to that are part of our small security teams, typically blue teams, uh, meaning that they are responsible for defensive uh, uh, security. Um, basically, they do security in this way where they are stuck in a corner, uh, not necessarily collaborating uh, with developers and joining in all the fun that is, uh, you know, stand up meetings or things like that. So, most DevOps and Agile documentation is written for developers and operations. There's these fancy words DevSecOps, SecDevOps, DevOps, Sec, et cetera, in particular, but those usually predicate collaboration between developers and operations. Uh, basically, the idea being that security is everyone's job and everybody should collaborate. But it's usually catered towards uh, the processes that are involved in the development of applications, deployment, and things like that, and how we can make the deployment secure, the applications secure, et cetera. Uh, often that ignores the activities that small security teams have to do as well, such as uh, uh, vulnerability management, incident response, things that don't necessarily involve developers. So there's very little documentation on that and how we can do even security in an uh, agile fashion. Agile, after all, was created by developers for developers. Uh, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, security teams such as Stockholm Psy, um, and then I say no more in Si Se Puede. So, uh, but why do we even care to do uh, security in an agile way? Well, we want to increase the visibility of security-related tasks. Usually security is something that is not seen uh, by uh, stakeholders, whether that's clients or, um, or the internal staff of the company. Uh, so uh, the above becomes it's really helpful when the company is audited. The more your work is visible, uh, the more you have ready to show an auditor that's doing a security audit to your company. Uh, we can also increase collaboration between teams of developers that are already doing Agile and DevOps. So if security knows how to do Agile uh, and it's familiar with DevOps tools, then uh, all the better. Uh, we allow security teams to evaluate risk and resulting needs um, more than once a few months uh, by way of uh, stand-up meetings uh, and uh, sprint planning, etc. And now uh, the idea is also to increase communication and collaboration between security uh, people and uh, uh, the issues and concerns that are related to security can be brought up earlier. So what does Agile in the, in the context of security uh, look like? So we can try tasks using a centralized backlog and prioritize, prioritize, prioritize. Have short stand-up meetings uh, to verify and um, prioritize tasks, press blockers, et cetera. Uh, maintain everyone in the know as to what everyone's doing. Uh, automate the uh, planning of uh, SOC uh, uh, in security-related tasks. Uh, Sort control scripts, uh, security strips, uh, sysadmin scripts, configuration file for firewalls and things like that, et cetera. Uh, continuous learning, continuous proof improvement. Some words that are thrown around, but they're true. Uh, at least that's been my uh, experience that when we do things in an agile way, uh, people are more, for some reason, they start getting more excited about sharing and uh, therefore learning. So, uh, selling Agile and DevOps to security, uh, uh, for security to the company. So, you know, I'm just a guy that was uh, asked to please help with this, but why will anybody listen to me when I'm just using words like Agile and DevOps? I might just be a, a, an annoying kid that just gets too uh, excited about things. So, <laughs> uh, social engineering, not really, but we can identify common frustrations uh, in the team ask for, hey, where are the backlogs for? All the things that you say that we have to do that are frustrating you, that, hey, we probably have all these vulnerabilities here, you never get time to uh, run scans or remediate these things that you think are really important. Uh, where is the backlog for that? Um, usually spread all over the place. Um, where is the documentation uh, for different scripts and for how-tos on how to do things uh, as an infrastructure team? And uh, you might need to do some uh, point of concepts for management on your own. So, 
you're like, ah, that's gonna take a long time to move uh, things to uh, fancy tools like Azure DevOps, which we'll go over in a bit. Uh, just, you might need to show them, hey, this is really easy and we can do it really fast. I just moved all this code from on-prem TFS systems to uh, Azure DevOps. And a lot of times that uh, helps greatly. Show that you have done the research, don't just be like, ah, I've heard that Agile is fun. Uh, let's just do it because should that you have actually uh, evaluated why Agile will help the particular company that you're trying to help uh, become more Agile, uh, or the particular team, rather. Uh, sh identify gaps that might exist in the tooling. So a lot of companies might have vulnerability management software that does not allow you to track remediation efforts. Uh, the same thing with uh, um, incident response tools, SIM tools that do security monitoring. A uh, lot of the tools that smaller companies can afford don't have a way for you to track the, uh, or an effective way to track ways to, uh, how a uh, consultant, uh, uh, a member of the security team is tracking a particular alarm and trying to figure out what, uh, doing an investigation on that event. Um, so uh, then I propose that we'll use Azure DevOps, uh, again, used to be called VSTS, others refer to it as TFS for some reason. Uh, Microsoft platform that allows teams to do DevOps in Agile. It allows you to create wikis, ports for tasks. It has a, it's a, it basically has everything uh, that you need to do DevOps in Agile. So uh, CI, CD, pipelines, uh, source control, wikis with markdown, etc. cetera. Uh, each team can have their own task board. Uh, so you can have a project in Azure DevOps and within the same project, different smaller teams that might be prior of the greater team can start collaborating. Uh, and they can see each other's tasks, but also have their own uh, boards um, for their, uh, the tasks that pertain to that particular team. Uh, each team can have their own, their own sprint uh, and still maintain visibility for the entire uh, bigger team. And it's very useful when teams have separate functions. So for instance, the small security, uh, small IT team that uh, has a, uh, two guys that do development, three guys that do infrastructure, uh, and then two guys that are like, you're gonna be the security people. So um, this is the teams uh, that you can set up in Azure DevOps and it's very useful, again, when there are multiple responsibilities and tasks that uh, are do not necessarily cross over uh, because each team can have their own board. So uh, you can just switch between teams uh, and then you can also, um, Select, if you clicked on work items, you can also see the list for tasks, uh, the tasks that everybody has. So you get a, the, an idea of what everyone's working on. Um, and like I mentioned, you can uh, have uh, sprints for different teams. So again, uh, the security team or the two guys that are responsible for security might not need to, uh, you know, might not be able to collaborate in the sprint for development, so they can just create their own sprint and not uh, make things, uh, make, make a mess out of things. Um, and this is a view for all work items. So we have here security, information technology, and development. Uh, you can view all the work items and have an idea of the level of um, the workload that the entire team has. So you mean stories, tasks, and epics for security? H how does that work? Uh, well, there's, again, the, the documentation is very limited on doing agile, doing security in an agile way. So you have to kind of apply the punk rock ethos, which is DIY, uh, do it yourself. But also don't go crazy with DIY. So DIY, BD, GC, but don't go crazy. <laughs> uh, you need to adapt the team needs and create your own the definition for what, the, what the each task and typically in, a, in, in, in Scrum methodology means um, because that's usually what's in available in tools like Azure DevOps. So for instance, a user story, which is really typic, uh, or typically represents a user feature uh, can be used to uh, any task that a uh, security team needs to complain, uh, complete within one sprint. So uh, patching a set of hosts as again, a specific vulnerability. Uh, the tasks, which are how you subdivide a, uh, the, the work that you need to do to complete a user story. In the case of security, you can do that, uh, you, know, you can create a smaller task such as uh, test the patch in development environment, install the patch, run the scan, and then document the remediation, all of which could be completed in one sprint. Um, epics uh, can be just, uh, you know, bigger tasks that you can complete within a, a series of sprints. Um, issues can be impediments and blockers, bugs. Nice, we can have security bugs documented that way. 
So this is an example, and it analysis exports the results from a yeah, scanner tool. Uh, then those are documented. Uh, we create a user story, uh, prioritize the work in during the sprint planning, uh, and then the analyst gets to uh, gets a sprint to work on remediation for a series of uh, uh, network devices or whatnot. The same thing for incident response. If there is a series of events that need some sort of investigation, that can be added as a uh, uh, as a user story in Azure DevOps, uh, then you uh, you know start doing the planning during sprint planning. Uh, the team member then gets a full sprint to do investigation on that particular set of events and document the results in the story. Then there's more documentation for e every two weeks. You have all this nice set of documentation that then you can show at an auditor. Um, you can also use this awesome feature for the Azure DevOps has, uh, which is creating templates. So for instance, in this case, uh, I created a uh, template for remediation of uh, vulnerabili vulnerability. Uh, all you do is just go right there. <laughs> uh, you click uh, templates and select the, uh, in this case, it's a SIM event investigation uh, template. You just add all these um, fields that you require the analyst to uh, fill out during sprint planning or when they add any issues to the backlog, just so that he or she knows what needs to be uh, added and documented. So uh, the same thing goes for uh, vulnerability management. Uh, you know, uh, if we don't have much time, so I might just uh, skip this part, but it's basically the same thing. You can create a new work item, select a user story, and then I had already created a template, which is very easy to create in Azure DevOps, uh, in this way, a vulnerability management or remediation activity. Uh, it fills all this out. It requires the um, analyst to upload a yeah, scan demonstrating that the issue was remediated or whatnot. So uh, we were implementing Azure DevOps. Everything was going great. Uh, however, teams were using uh, well, teams were using uh, Azure DevOps for scheduling tasks, and we had a backlog. Uh, the development code uh, leaves, started living in Azure DevOps. Everybody was getting um, excited about the collaboration tools that we're starting to use. Uh, we're having sprint planning meetings for development and security teams. Uh, we are on track. But we're not completing all tasks that have been assigned to each team member during sprint planning. We're starting to, people are starting to question whether this was all worth it because look, we are assigning everybody 10 different tasks each sprint and then we're only getting 40% of it done. Uh, that's a bummer. <laughs> Uh, so we the problem that starts happening is that we start getting so excited about the tools that we let the tools guide our process rather than the team needs guide what needs to be done. Uh, the stakeholders uh, might also start getting confused if they are used to doing, uh, getting things done using waterfall processes and things like that. They might be um, confused as to what's happening and they might not have too uh, enough visibility. Part of that is because they have not been brought in and included in the process. Um, so how you, we, solve, we start solving the, some of those problems, uh, just going back to the uh, main values of Agile, or, which is individuals and interactions over processes and tools, working software, uh, maybe for security could be just results uh, over comprehensive documentation. Um, customer, which in this case will be a stakeholder and the team itself, uh, uh, collaboration over contract negotiation, uh, responding to change over following a plan. Just stick to those principles uh, and don't go crazy with uh, Scrum and uh, trying to use every single feature that the tool offers. So we identify the issues uh, that were causing people to become frustrated uh, with using Agile. Uh, that included uh, creating different projects for developers uh, in security, which we initially did. That results in a uh, development having to go to a uh, different URL to see their task, uh, security. Uh, so we started then just using that feature that I showed earlier where within the same project, uh, different teams can uh, collaborate. And uh, we were jumping straight into Scrum, which is a worse idea. If Scrum is pretty complicated, especially if you're just getting started on that, and it's gonna seem uh, tedious and there's so many terms. So uh, you just have to remember that we need to do Agile first and then Scrum. Um, it's simple, just stick to those values again. Uh, the lack of training on DevOps, Agile, and Scrum uh, was part of an issue, uh, so we needed to start having lunch and learns and things like that. 
uh, changes have not been communicated effectively to stakeholders, directors, and such. Uh, and the uh, stand-up seldom occur, uh, which uh, a lot of people are against stand-ups at first. But uh, it turns out they're really, really helpful. You start seeing the value of stand-ups when you stop having stand-ups. Uh, so how do you get your team to not hate you, I mean, go agile? So uh, I do have a very particular set of skills uh, that I have acquired by studying my wife's social skills. It's fake social skills. So <laughs> uh, social engineering uh, can be used not to trick and deceive others, but to help increase collaboration and reduce friction. So what I started doing was just talking with the different teams and trying to see, hey, what, or the different members of the team and seeing what their frustrations were with the process. Uh, they felt that we were just doing all these changes behind closed doors and they were just being dragged along for the ride. Uh, so that was part of a problem that uh, we encountered. We just needed to increase the collaboration between teams. I started uh, going to the office uh, more often than uh, not just to uh, be able to have lunch with team members and trying to ask them questions about, hey, so what do you think we can do better? Uh, and trying to involve them in the process and uh, so they know that their opinion matters and that we're doing this for them, not, because, not just because we think Agile is cool. Uh, so start making corrections and iterate. Uh, part of the uh, mistakes that people make is thinking that once we go agile, we cannot make mistakes. Uh, it is an iterative uh, process, uh, so uh, things are not gonna go great at first. We're gonna be missing a lot of tasks, uh, but each sprint we will get better, and that needs to be communicated uh, constantly. So half all team members use different teams uh, uh, within the same project in the natural DevOps, as I mentioned. Simplify the process. Focus on Agile first, Scrum later. Uh, start having daily stand-ups. Uh, retrospective are also very important because they allow you to show, hey, this is what we did, didn't do well the last sprint, but this is what we did good. This is uh, what this is what we did well. So let's uh, let's know the improvements over time. Uh, and start including the stakeholders in the process. You might need to get, hey. Uh, I'm gonna set up a lunch and learn and we're gonna invite the directors uh, just to show them uh, a little bit of how Agile works and why we're doing it. Uh, so again, uh, DIY BDGC. So do it yourself, but don't go crazy. Um, so collaboration tools. Uh, another good feature of Azure DevOps is the ability to write wikis. Uh, those are great uh, because they uh, allow people to share uh, information and also to collaborate on the documents like how to use uh, uh, for how to use, for instance, uh, vulnerability management tools and tricks that people might know. Um, those are uh, cool tools that people can start using. Uh, and they, and in the case of Azure DevOps, it allows you to use Markdown, uh, which. Uh, a lot of times people are, that haven't used Markdown, they think it's gonna be all this complicated work. It's actually pretty easy, as you, most of you will probably know. Um, that's the wikis for SOC, which I already mentioned. You can use them to uh, put your incident response playbook, uh, miscellaneous cheat sheets, uh, process, uh, the processes that you need to follow in the case of an event, alarms and or incidents, etc. Uh, so source control and change management, a lot of uh, companies or a lot of people that work in security, uh, blue teams and things like that, they might have their scripts all over the place. Uh, start trying to focus people into uh, using uh, source control. And in the case of Azure DevOps, it's right there in the same place where your uh, tasks live. Uh, so uh, you can start source control in PowerShell scripts used by a T for sysadmin and security tasks. Uh, this allows for more collaboration source control configuration files, uh, firewalls, access point, for firewalls, access points, uh, WAFs, uh, and then use the key, man key management features in Azure DevOps to avoid having to store passwords and sensitive information. Uh, you can also use uh, CI CD pipelines uh, for doing cool things. For instance, uh, there is a, uh, uh, a task that you can add once you deploy co code that just runs this free uh, scanner created by OWASP, uh, the open uh, web application uh, security people, <laughs> the, the piece that project, sorry. Uh, so uh, it uh, once code is deployed and released, then it runs a scan. Uh, so this is going back to that collaboration with uh, developers. Uh, but you can also uh, get creative 
Uh, for instance, you can run automated scans when code is deployed, which, which is when our uh, deploy scripts that kickstart security auditing task, leveraging Azure functions uh, or on-prem build agents. Uh, automate scanning activities by writing APIs or by leveraging APIs rather that are that communicate with tools like Tenable and Inside VM. Those tools usually allow you uh, have an API that allow you to interface with to uh, write uh, cool automation with, and you can integrate that again in Azure DevOps uh, pipelines and things like that. Uh, there are some limitations to the tool. Uh, for instance, uh, there is not an ability you don't have an ability to lock down some uh, wiki documents. So if you have a uh, sensitive document that you want to have in your uh, wiki in Azure DevOps, uh, and let's say you don't want the developers to see it because you are just doing all kinds of complaining about the development team, OK, not really, but uh, then there's no way to do that. So within the same project, you cannot uh, restrict wiki do documentation to different teams. Uh, it's kind of difficult to move tasks around sometimes in some of the uh, part of the interface. You do get five, five free developers, uh, one free pipeline with some limitations as far as uh, how many builds you have a month. But you can also create your own. Uh, they have configuration files that allow you to install uh, on-prem build agents. Uh, you can install those in a VM. Uh, so uh, but overall, still my favorite Microsoft tool uh, besides VS Code. Um, I think it's uh, well worth it, the effort to start using it. In particular, if your company uses a lot of Microsoft technology, uh, they'll be happy to hear that this is uh, made by Microsoft. So how did everything end? Uh, we started doing security in an agile way. Uh, when we started doing, when people started thinking that, no, let's just go back to all, uh, all Excel sheets and uh, Gantt charts and things like that, things fell like, they were moving too slowly, um, or that they were going to move too slowly, and it felt integrated. So uh, we were already committed to this process, uh, so we continued using it. Uh, the security certification that, in this case, the company wanted to obtain uh, was obtained. So that was awesome, because the process itself, basically trying to inject Agile in the security processes, allow us to generate sufficient documentation to where anything that the auditors asked, we were just like, we just have it right here. Most of it already lived in Azure DevOps, again, in the form of wiki uh, documentation or tasks that were completed demonstrating, hey, yeah, we remediated this task. And we have these scans stored, the results for these scans stored with the remediation task as well. Um, presentation was still a challenge, and I think it is for a lot of people, uh, but one that got easier to solve as people get more hands-on security experience. They get more, uh, more of a better idea of uh, you know, what what involves uh, tracking a set of alarms in an incident response uh, tool, or a SIM tool, rather. Uh, some lessons uh, that we learned. So agile security, it, there's no not a, a handbook on how to do uh, security in an agile way. Uh, so you need to uh, be creative. Uh, again, apply the do-it-yourself program kitas, but don't go crazy either. Uh, so Agile before Scrum. After all, Scrum is prescriptive and designed for development. So don't be too strict with uh, how you are doing Agile. Just let the needs of the team and of the company drive your processes. Um, InfoSec plus DevOps is awesome. So uh, if you have security starting to use tools like Docker uh, for building images where they can, or containers where they have all the tools that they need, or building environments where they can test uh, different vulnerabilities and things like that. Uh, it is a pretty awesome tool for security. Uh, and I wish more people in security start learning those tools. Uh, simplify sprints, avoid concurrent sprints. We were doing all kinds of crazy things like, OK, so the sprint for IT stuff is going to start this week. The next week, we are going to start that other sprint. And at one point, it was, it was a mess. So. Just simplify the sprints, just make sure to avoid uh, concurrent sprints and going too crazy with, again, this is an issue where you are going, uh, you are getting distracted by the capabilities of the tool. Uh, and also train stakeholders. Um, and in this case, it's stakeholders for us was the company itself, uh, the people that work in for our company and the uh, so directors and things like that. So uh, training on Azure DevOps so they can uh, actually go to Azure DevOps uh, and I they can see what you're up to. Uh, so 
sometimes you don't have to talk to them as much, which could be nice, depending <laughs> on the situation. Um, so that's it. Uh, mainly just a story on this uh, kind of uh, experience that I had. I think uh, Agile uh, in security uh, can be done, and I hope that uh, people uh, start, uh, the security teams start moving that way as far as uh, processes and things like that. Um, only have five minutes left. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. Yes. Uh, this was a company was a, 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 a cons I was working as a consultant uh, initially, and then I went back uh, to help them obtain the security certification uh, as a security engineer and uh, and software developer. So I was managing multiple things at the same time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Thank you, guys.